Hello out there, everyone watching this, whether you be a regular subscriber, someone new to the channel, or a horrific cosmic entity from beyond time, space, and dimensions that we know. So what this, what is this? What, why am I here? Um, this is a kind of unboxing video, and by kind of I mean it is exactly an unboxing video for uh, Cthulhu Wars. It's not for the base game, um, which we have already played about with on the channel, there's a link to us playing it in the video description below, um, but two specifically, the stuff I just got in from the second wave or onslaught of Cthulhu Wars Kickstarter goodness. Um, I didn't actually own any Cthulhu Wars prior to this, so along with Onslaught 2, which is the current Onslaught, I also got everything from Onslaught 1 and a whole bunch of stretch goals, and basically I'm just going to run through them all and show you them all, which is why this video has a horrific length listed below or above whatever kind of browser you're looking on. Um, I haven't opened any of these packages yet. Um, apart from this one, the base game, which I got months and months and months ago, which I'm not going to open and display. Um, it's just here for thematic reasons and because it feels soothing resting on my big fat belly. Um, we're not going to go through any rules or any kind of stuff like that. Um, if you want to jump to a specific onslaught uh, or the stretch goals, there's timestamps below so that you don't have to watch things that you have no interest in watching. Um, but yeah, enjoy me talking. Um, in what becomes a very tired voice towards the end um, about everything ava currently available for Cthulhu Wars. I think I don't even want to think about there being more stuff available because it's, oh my god, there's so much stuff. Enjoy. Okay, so let's get down to it with the uh, with the unboxing proper, I guess. Um, yeah, it's worth noting I haven't uh, <laughs> I haven't opened any of this stuff yet. I've basically just taken the uh, the plastic wrapping off it and all that kind of thing. So if we counter anything with breakages or whatever, then yeah, that's that's just that, I guess. But um, I mean, it's a big package. I'd be surprised if there wasn't something that was broken or warped or something like that. Um, but so far from, from just a surface inspection, everything has been perfect, uh, which makes me weirdly worried in some way, but there we go. Um, okay, so this is the first uh, thing we're going to take a look at, which is probably going to be pretty quick, uh, which is just these plastic gates, uh, which are just here ugh, to replace the, uh, the kind of default cardboard uh, or paper, I guess, I don't know, cardstock. Or something, yeah, no, they're cardboard, uh, cardboard gates that you get in the uh, in the main game. Uh, yeah, they're pretty nice, pretty kind of nicely generic -y colored things with weird symbol in the middle. Yeah, if you'd pop your cultists on or, or whatever's controlling that uh, that zone. Yeah, there's not much to say about these really, um, other than the fact that this is a ridiculously chunky bag full of them. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I could kill someone with this. Um, <laughs> hello, uh, security, global security services. Um, yeah, yeah, they're nice. They're nice, chunk, very, like all the plastic stuff in Cthulhu Wars, it's just, yeah, the, the heft of these things is real. So, um, yeah, I thought I'd open with that most straightforward of all things. Then we've got the High Priests expansion. Um, which just gives you an extra option of kind of a thing to add to each faction, I guess. Um, yeah, so it's a new, uh, basically a, a new kind of creature for each faction. Uh, and I think they're different in each faction as well. So obviously these are one for each of the uh, all the factions leading up to... Um, all the factions in Onslaught 1, I think, yeah, because there should be 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, and then 1, 2, three. oh no, but Azathoth is a, Azathoth presumably doesn't have a High Priest because uh, the Azathoth, Azathoth faction is um, kind of AI controlled in a way, I guess, I, not controlled by a player, um, 
so yeah, you've got all the, the different colours with the different factions. Uh, it's a nice mould of crazy, creepy-looking high priest dude. Uh, same mould for each of them. My hand is shaking ridiculously there. Um, yeah, but it's nice though. Uh, yeah, I don't have much to say about the High Priest, it's not exactly the thing I'm looking forward to the most, but um, anything in the game that gives you like an extra different type of unit uh, that could be fun and like a kind of in-between, uh, between the cultists and the monsters or whatever, like a kind of in-between power level, that sounds fun to me. Um, so yeah, but uh, not, not the most exciting thing I'm opening up here. So, we'll swiftly move on. And we'll move on to the first of the faction expansions in, uh, in Cthulhu Wars Onslaught 1. Uh, and it's the one I'm looking forward to the most, because uh, it's the opener of the way, led by... led? <laughs> guided? I don't know how you'd term it. Uh, by my favourite Lovecraftian uh, great old one, Yog sothoth the lurker at the threshold, the key in the gate, all in one, one in all. Uh, yeah, so I'm pretty excited about this, I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, so obviously we've got the, uh, the Omega Edition uh, rules, uh, which means that they've been revised for this reprint of Onslaught 1, I believe. Um, and this, I believe they should be present in the, the Omega Edition rule, but, but we'll get to that later in the video. Um, you've got your, your faction card there. Uh, with the unique ability. I'm going to read some of these because I, I actually have not read anything to do with anything but the base game um, all the way through this Kickstarter because I, I like to be surprised by stuff when stuff arrives. Um, so unique ability, the beyond one, uh, action cost only one. Select one of your units with a cost of three plus in an area with a gate but lacking any enemy great old one. Move that unit, the gate and any controlling unit to any area on the map lacking a gate. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. Shuffling the board about, essentially. Uh, or, you know, the, the, the units on the board. That's, uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty interesting stuff. That's going to fuck with a lot of people's days. Um, you've got your spell books here that need to be, uh, they need to be punched out. And then, okay, let's, uh, let's go up here. We've got our, uh, we've got our cultists. And we've also got our mutants, uh, million favoured ones. Uh, do I need to get out of the cultists? I don't know, I'll get out of the cultists anyway. They're, they're, all the cultists are the same um, for all the different factions, just a different colour. Uh, so I'll show you this cultist here, and then you've seen the cultist ones. There we go. Uh, and then we've got these mutants, uh, which are ooh, they are pretty horrible. They've got a load of uh, intestine slash tentacle stuff on the stomach and a load of horrible growths on their on their back there and some creepy legs so they're pretty fun and then we have uh, an abomination which is just that good god these things are horrible um yeah they've got a real um thing vibe about them actually as in the movie the thing um yeah these are these are horrible these are great <laughs> That's what you've got to uh, think about when you're looking at Cthulhu War stuff, you know. It's great. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's great. Yeah. Gross. I like that. I like that model. Uh, then we've got the spawn of Yog sothoth um, Presumably these would be um, the same kind of thing as in the Dunwich Horror. Is a spawn of Yog sothoth if any of you have read that story. Um, it's one of my favourite Lovecraft stories. You should go read it. Um, and the, a spawn of Yog sothoth plays quite a big part in that story. Um, I'm assuming this is intended to be that a, a that a Dunwich that a spawn of Yog sothoth is the Dunwich horror, vice versa. Um, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Um, yeah, just ah, oh, these models are really good. <laughs> Um, there's a lot of detail in the moulding, um, and just, you can, I don't know if the camera can even pick it up, but these kind of veins that you can see on these globular bits on the back of them, ah, oh, they're gross, it's great, <laughs> it's so good, it's so good, and so chunky, and ah, oh, this, this right here is prestige board gaming, folks. Um, and then, hoo, 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 we've got Yog sothoth 
itself, um, which is kind of a different uh, portrayal than the, the typical one of yogg -Sothoth. Um It's described in the books as uh, kind of conjuries of iridescent globes, which is often interpreted as bubbles, essentially, like just lots of ro like this big cloud of roiling bubbles. Um, and this has gone for a different, definitely more organic one. You know what? This is almost Geiger-like. Um, H.R. Geiger-like in the in the interpretation of it. There's definitely a vibe I'm getting, that kind of bio-organic, uh, bio, bio organic biomechanic even, um, vibe to it going on, which um, I like, and it's a nice model, but I do I, I do really like that that interpretation of um of Yog Sothoth, the kind of roiling cloud of bubbles sort of thing, or or like kind of slick globes and or, or whatever. But um hey, this is a good model. This is a good model too. Um and that would be one that might be quite either difficult to do justice as a model of this type or um or maybe even quite boring to look at, I don't know. Um so they've gone for this. I'm I'm happy with this. Um I might have liked the traditional one. It's fine, it's fine. It's not all for me. Okay. So that is our first faction expansion. And I've been thinking about whether or not we should uh, kind of change this up as we go. And go for, uh, ro you know, rotate through the factions and the great album packs. But you know what, we will, um, we'll do everything that is similar together. Is this, am I being an idiot? Is this meant to... Uh... No. Could this go underneath? Seems like this could go underneath. That can go underneath. These probably could as well. So we'll pop them there for now. Okay. Opener of the way. First faction. Very nice. Obviously these have been out for a good couple of years now, so... Many of you may already own them, but I, they're new to me, they're new to me and that's exciting. So, next one is the Sleeper Faction, um, guided by Sothogua, the Sleeper of Nakai. Um, often mentioned in Lovecraft, but never, I don't think ever shown on the page, or, or, or very in a very limited fashion maybe. Again, you've got your uh, rather nice little... Uh, Faction rulebook, which is pretty good, pretty good stuff. Um, faction sheet, death from below in the doom phase. Place your lowest cost monster from your pool to any area containing any of your units. Well, wow, that's pretty cool. So you just get free units. Neat. That's good. And they kind of escalate, so you've got a kind of you kind of got a reason there to get to buy all your lower cost monsters and get them out on the board. Because if you do that, the stuff you get for free is more cost efficient. Yeah, I think I'm reading that right. Um, okay, yeah, there's your spell book. And let's uh, we'll have a look at the cultists. As I said before, they're all the uh, they're all the same apart from the color. Uh, but what we've got here is a uh, wizard. That's pretty weird wizard, guys. It's a pretty weird wizard. He appears to have a mouth that's also his arms and his groin. That's pretty weird. Pretty weird. This is actually the weirdest figure I've seen in Cthulhu Wars. That's pretty odd and highly unsettling. Which is just what I want. Um, we then have oh, are there oh, are the serpent men in here? Serpent men in here? Yes, no, yes, yes, they are. Yes, there we go. Uh, serpent man does what it says on the tin. It's a serpent. That is also a man. These guys are cool. They're uh, they're a little bit um, D and D looking, but that's fine. How else are you going to do a serpent man realistically? Yeah, not realistically, as in what real serpent men look like. That's um, 
real, I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this, but real serpent men do not in fact exist. Um, okay, and then we've got some formless spawn, which are, again, do very much what they say on the tin. Um, yeah, well, I like these guys. That, um, that toothy moor is horrific, and they've got a kind of, it's almost like they become an octopus at the back with an eye here, and some tentacles curling around, but, uh, yeah. Nice. Uh, and there's four of those. And then we've got Sothogio himself, who appears to have some kind of weird black mark on his tongue, but other than that, that could be easily clean enough. I'll get rid of the hands on. Uh, yeah, this guy's pretty hefty. Again, this, um, ooh, yeah. This guy might be almost as heavy as uh, the model of Haster, which is just, it's just a weapon, basically. Um, oh, he's got very protrusive nipples. That's uh, eh, exciting. Um, yeah, oh, what? you know, I'd seen this model and I um, I thought, oh, he's all right, he's all right. But I'm actually quite a lot more impressed by him than I thought I would be. Look at the uh, look at the detail on that fur on the back. And just a weird little ball pad, I like that. Yeah, and the claws and the kind of sense that there's more of him just sat below the ground there dragging himself out of this fetid pit to uh, just have a bit of a munch, have a bit of a munch on your face. Yeah, I like him. That's cool. Exciting orange colour as well. Uh, I do like my Lovecraftian Nightmares orange flavoured, so... Again, very pleased, very pleased. I'm um, I'm not expecting to be <laughs> disappointed with any of this, really. Um, the, the quality in the base game is so high that I didn't have any expectations, but for it, for all the expansion stuff to be just top-notch. Um, so, yeah, so far it's living up to my expectations. Uh, again, we've got our... Uh, Faction of a book and our faction sheet for the Windwalker. Uh, this is a double great old one faction led by uh, Ithaqua and Remtegoth. Uh, hibernate. Uh, plus one to your power for each enemy great old one in play, but you cannot more than double your current power in doing so. Okay, You can perform no more actions during the rest of this action phase as if you were at zero power. Add your current power to your total next gather power phase. Okay, so that's interesting. So at the end of each of your turns, you can. Um, you can bulk up some power depending on how many enemy great old ones are out there. Okay, that's interesting. Um, we've got, uh, obviously we've got some acolytes in here, but we'll be looking at them. And uh, we also have, uh, oh yeah, those guys are there, okay. We've got the uh, Nofke, who are kind of like um, the, the Lovecraft version of the Abominable Snowman, I guess. Um, or is it? Is it Lovecraft? I'm not sure if most of the Windwalker stuff is actually someone else. I want to say Ramsey Campbell, but I could be wrong. There are a lot of other writers in the Cthulhu Mythos, and I don't read any of them. <laughs> Although I probably should pick up uh, pick up some of their stuff. Um, but I am familiar with most of these creatures from um, the Call of Cthulhu tabletop role playing game, um, or at least the edition I have, which I think is fifth edition. Um, and it has a very nice little bestiary in it that has a lot of detail for a lot of this stuff. Again, the fur detailing, ugh, very good for like, for plastic figures for a board game. Like, it, forget about it, just, you're not going to get better. I don't think how you're going to get better. They've got a creepy ass face as well. I don't know if that's coming through on, on camera, but yeah, very nice. And then we've got a, uh, a Wendigo. Wendigo. Ooh, which is interesting. Again, a kind of like, um, kind of a slightly 
I want to say, yeah, a nicely traditional portrayal of a Wendigo, um, which is, of course, a, uh, a native native Canadian myth, I think, rather than Native American. Um, yeah, creepy furry guy with the middle of him, just kind of almost unzipped with ribs and entrails on display. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty nasty stuff. Pretty nasty stuff. Uh, and then we've got our two great old ones for this faction. Uh, let's take a look at Ram Tegoth first. You creepy armadillo crab, you. Uh, yeah, again, lots of uh, lots of lovely tentacles on display. Um, bit of a, an, I guess, an obvious gap between um, miniature components there, but there's nothing wrong with that. Adds a bit of depth to the miniature. Um, yeah, again, very hefty. Very hefty. Um, if you needed to carry out some kind of cosmically horrific smash and grab, this uh, this would do just fine. But yeah, there's Ram Tegoth. Wrong way around. And then we've got Athaqua, the Windwalker. Um, oh God! Wow. Sorry, I was just caught looking at his face, which is really grim. <laughs> Uh, and twisted round like that, I love that. Just a great dynamism to a lot of the poses of these of these models, um, especially the kind of the kind of formless or I don't know, like I don't know what you call it, the goopy ones. Let's just call them the goopy ones. Um, yeah, nice. So I do like that model. Excellent. And it's always fun having two great old ones on the tabletop uh, because it just makes you feel like you're, you're special, you know? You've got two formless horrible gods to, uh, got two of them at your back. Always better than one, folks. If you're, if you're only, if you're only young and you're watching this, do remember, it's always better to have two horrific formless gods at your back instead of one. Okay, Windwalker faction. Uh, now we're going to look at the Azathoth faction, which is slightly different in that um, I believe I'm correct in saying, I don't wonder if it says anything about it on the back, that it is kind of an AI faction. Yes, a unique neutral expansion. Its great old one is not associated with any other faction, with any faction. Instead, the first player to awaken him takes control. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, and there's also four types of neutral monsters which can be acquired by players. Okay, okay, so that's interesting. Um, so it's not so much like a, a faction that's off for itself, it's just you can, it's more stuff that you can recruit uh, themselves. Okay, so that's interesting, that's interesting. So in a way it's kind of like the, the other great old one packs and, and monster packs and stuff. It's just all a bunch of stuff together, I suppose. Um, okay, so that's interesting. I thought I thought it was more of a, they were more of an actual faction. But uh, that's fine. That's fine. That's my expectation, not not the correct thing. Uh, obviously, we've got all our punch card stuff. You've got some spell books here. Um, you've got the punch card for Azathoth, so whoever wake, awakens him, um, yeah, uh, gets to to do some fun stuff with him. Um, all players need to have at least great one great old one in play by the look of it. Yeah, cool. Okay, let's have a look at these guys then. So, if I can uh, figure out the best way to look and see what these guys are. Ah, quite like this. Things are not on the faction card. There we go. Okay. This'll do. So, first up, we've got some dimensional shamblers here. Who are... Wow, just horrible bony things with skin slipping around on them, with a nasty, nasty mouth. And a backwards foot, which for some reason I find one of the most terrific things about it. Very nice. And we've got some uh, star vampires. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, I just touched the smoothness at the top of this figure and got genuinely creeped out by it. It's like, oh god, that doesn't feel natural. Um, <laughs> which isn't that surprising, really. Uh, with all these kind of weird proboscis things, and these 
Grumar. Oh God, there's there's someone not having a good time right underneath there. I don't know if you can see. There's some kind of unfortunate soul just underneath. About yeah, not having a good time. Not having a good time, and it's about to get worse. Yeah, there's a star vampire. And I think in here we've got uh, two different things. Let's have a look. Yeah, we've got the three servitors of the outer gods. Um, yeah. Mm. Well, I can't remember the name of the weird phobia that has to do with arranged uh, numbers of holes in certain things. But uh, that, might, that might set that off. And they've got a nice flute. Nice flute. Good old flute. If you are ever in doubt that flutes are creations of spectral nightmares from beyond time and space, there you go. Uh, and then we've got some Elder Things, which is pretty exciting. Uh, if you know your Lovecraft, yeah, Elder Things. Um, they're weird kind of starfish heads and wings and stuff, yeah. You dig one of these guys up in the Antarctic, just just go home. Just go home. It's not gonna not gonna work out well for you. There's gonna be mutant penguins. There's gonna be shoggoths. Ugh, baz reliefs. Yeah, nightmare. And then finally in this uh, in the set, this is I guess more of a set than a faction. Um, if I can actually get the older things back in here, which is looking increasingly unlikely. Maybe. I don't know. Put you on top. Will that do? That might do better. No! Oh god. First putting things into a box. Nightmare of the unboxing. I'm not entirely sure this needs a plastic bag. Why didn't you edit this bit out, Matt? Well, because I'm a rebel, YouTube. That's why. Okay. And then let's look at Azathoth, who is uh, not a great old one. He's an outer god. He's kind of the outer god. The blind idiot god. Nuclear chaos. The daemon sultan who writhes mindlessly at the centre of the universe to the insane piping of his servant gods. These these guys of the flutes. Uh, yeah, that's a nice model. That's a nice model. Um, <laughs> very tentacly, again, nice nice big old eye from in the middle there. A horrible, yeah, kind of two sarlacc mouths, or one sarlacc mouth and one kind of sarlacc mouth that also kind of looks, got a bit of Vagina dentata going on there, but we'll ignore that. Um, moving swiftly on from that statement, uh, I like how um, I presume it's intentional because the other models don't have it. That he he almost looks like he's kind of um, pressed together from clay. It's got that kind of texture, substance, and like he's obviously as a a char character, not really a character. He's got that, that kind of vibe because he's formless and constantly moving and shifting. So um, yeah, again, nice model. Now let's see if I can get all this stuff back in without the need for placing things below. I'm going to go with no. But let's find out together. Oh, 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 kind of, yes. There we go. Okay, so I would say that's the last faction one, but as discussed, it's still the last of these size of boxes, which I suppose is one kind of definition. Uh, so let's move on to the kind of monster and great old one packs. So first up, we've got the uh, Dreamlands Surface Monster Pack. Uh, for use on the Dreamlands map, which we're going to look at in not so long an amount of time. So the Dreamlands, for those of you who aren't familiar with Warcraft, 
Um, Lovecraft has a, has a kind of number of different cycles in his work. One of them is called the Dreamland Cycle, and it's quite different from the, as the other stuff, and consists of people from Earth um, being taken to or voluntarily going to uh, the kind of the Dreamlands, which is kind of the world we all go to when we dream. Is the idea. Uh, but these are kind of lucid dreamers and they have power over it and they can travel through these crazy worlds. And there is a, certainly a, a great deal of darkness there and a lot of the great old ones and outer gods are referenced there as, as well. Um, but it's definitely got not a lighter feel to it, but definitely more surreal, uh, weird feel than, um, than, than the Earth-based stuff. Um, and basically there is a Dreamlands map and there's some surface monsters in, on the Dreamlands. Um... And there's an underground underworld monsters too, which is this pack here. So let's take a look at the surface ones. Uh, first off, we've got these moon beasts, which are, yeah, little little horrible things that live on the moon and kidnap people and uh, have wars with cats. I'm not making this up. This is a plot thread in a Dreamland story by Lovecraft. Um, and then we've got this, which is, uh, I presume this is a nori. I'm not entirely sure what a nori is, to be brutally honest. I can't remember it from the stories. I'm sure it's in there. Um, but it's a pretty cool model. Yeah. <laughs> now, that is weirdly D&D-ish. For some reason, holding what seems to be a bat left. Um, but it's a pretty neat model. I like it. Not much to say about that. And then we've got a Shantak. Uh, which are kind of sort of dragon-like things, I guess. Fairly straightforward. The rest of them are in here. These are just kind of the, I guess, the demo ones that are in the front. Yeah, I like these guys. Uh, I have less investment in the Dreamland stuff than I do in the, uh, the straight-up horror stuff. Um, but I definitely do want to play a, a game on the Dreamlands map, because I, I, I believe that all, them, all the maps have uh, different kind of slightly different rule sets or different things you can do on the board as compared to uh, to the regular map, so I'm very interested to play all of those. Uh, and then we've got the Dreamlands Underworld Monsters. Um, so, we have got in here, it's not taping in for the first time, for a start. Can we get away without taping off? I can. Uh, so we've got some ghasts, who are... are they not actually... no, they're not ghouls, okay. I have a feeling these guys live in uh, like a weird underground forest or something like that, I don't know. I can't remember the story, but um, that is a cool model, because they're weird and creepy. You know what this actually reminds me of? Um, this is very uh, Guillermo del Toro, who's obviously hugely influenced by Lovecraft. Um, but it just has that kind of vibe, I don't know, a kind of Pan's Labyrinth vibe. Obviously a little bit like the Eyeless Man or whatever. Um, yeah. Neat. Neat models. Um, obviously it goes without saying that a lot of these models could be used for other games. Uh, whether they be kind of monsters in a role-playing scenario or or what have you. Because there's such variety um, of creepy horribleness, you know. Uh, Leng spiders. Um, yeah, if you're arachnophobic, don't, don't be looking at the screen that you're already probably looking at. Sorry. Um... Yeah, again, nice face. Nice face. Um, yeah, why did I touch that? <laughs> Creepy smoothness. Um, yeah. As this moves on, my commentary may become more and more... Yes, this is also a nice model, um, for which I apologise. And Gugs. Uh, Gugs, which have these cool arms that split in two and a kind of head that is just all a mouth that splits down down vertically. Um, yeah, fun stuff. Fun stuff. I believe they live in kind of reverse castles underground that kind of tower down into caverns. If I remember my story properly. Get that tucked away. We are, uh, I wasn't kidding when I said this video would take a while, uh, because we are, ooh, we're probably over halfway through Onslaught 1, but so uh, we're not near the end by any stretch of the imagination. And here we go with our first great old one pack. 
extra neutral-ish great old ones that one can uh, add to the game and recruit through the game and I'm going to try and recognize these guys um, off the bat. I know I will be able to recognize some of them straight up. Uh, this for example is Chorgnafaun. Chorgnafaun? Fogun? Um, yeah, big weird elephant dude lives under a hill in India, I believe, and creates mind control slaves by attaching onto them with his weird suckery proboscis slash trunk. Oh, he's got a horrible ass. Check that out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a good model, guys. That's a good model. Come on. That's a good model. You want to summon this guy in, don't you? Back you up. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Uh. Um, I might actually have to open this up to check who these other guys are so I get it right. I think I'll be able to guess some of them. But, uh, well, you know what? I think I've actually guessed most of them. Let's try this. Okay. So this here is Mother Hydra, who's one of the, um, gods or founders or something, ancestors of the uh, the Deep Ones in Lovecraft, uh, the other being Dagon. Um, so yeah, she's nicely creepy fish lady-ness. Surprising about her hair though, nice do. Maybe it's a wig. And the Hydra wears a wig. You heard it here first. Uh, then we have, I'm just going to double check I'm right with these. I think I am. I think this is Cthulhu. Cthulhu! Yes. He's a kind of formless uh, force of fire and destruction and entropy. Yeah, don't know much about him other than that. Kind of nice though. Bit of a bit of a Peter Jackson sour on vibe going on in the front. Kind of weird horse skull face thing. Yeah. Nice though. And then we have Yig. The father of serpents. Um, I guess that's what all the snakes are about. How many... There's not enough snakes, so put some snakes on your snake. Um, yeah. None more snake, essentially. Apart from, you know, the arms and stuff. Uh, yeah. Again, don't know much about Yig. Uh, beyond just an illustration in the bestiary in the Call of Cthulhu tabletop roleplay book, but... And then we have Apoth. Is this Apoth? I think this is probably Apoth. I'm going to double check that this is Apoth. Yes, this is Apoth. Uh, according to the back of the box, he's the source of uncleanness. Um, nice, nice. Just, just horribleness with the brain on top. Um, which is how I've been described by several ex-girlfriends, actually, but... Oh, I wish there was someone here with a drum kit to give me a cymbal crash for that one. But there isn't. Um, so, obviously, um, you get some... Uh, these tokens, I think, are for use with Apoth. They're filth tokens. Um, and then you get some nice thick card stuff for all the independent great old ones. Um, it's worth noting, I don't really know how these function yet. I don't know how, kind of how many you can put on the table to include. Um, the back of the box just says, select which independence you want to have. So I guess technically you could have them all. I wonder if you can have some crazy great old one-off variant mode, where you just basically keep on summoning great old ones until someone wins. Homebrew that one, people. I want to play that. And I'm too lazy to design it myself. Wheel back, wheel back. This might be an interesting box to re put back together. Yes, re-put back together is definitely the technical term. I don't care what you say. 
I'll see you in court if you disagree. Oh god. Oh god. There we go. That kind of worked. Okay, great old one, pack two. It's a re in great wall old one in Ing. So who have we got in this? Oh god. Oh god, it's all going wrong. Um oh well we had uh we had Mother Hydra and now we've got Father Dagon as well. Who doesn't immediately strike me as any of these guys? But uh, certainly not much like Mother Hydra. Not that that's a problem. Um, oh god. <laughs> I think it's tough doing these things when all of them just look like horrible formless monstrosities. Um, so doing the kind of symbols for them is. yeah. Uh, Bokrug. Um, the water lizard god creature thing. The doom that came to Sarnath. I know that one. I know that one. He's got a great mouth. Great, great tongue. Great tongue. Uh, again, some great texture work on this. Very um, kind of elephant or rhino-like. Just great work on that skin. Oh, uh, seriously though. Seriously though, guys. That is great. Well done. <laughs> seriously, whoever designed this. Well done. Uh, and made it and everything because that is that's gorgeous um it's kind of weird secondary mouth stretching down all his neck nice nice i do like that figure and then we've got atlak naka here uh yeah creepy arthropodish uh cosmic Sc spider god apparently but looks a bit more like an arthropod to me um Although, number of legs, yeah, okay, fair enough, I'll shut up. Um, oh, with a bunch, a face that is basically a bunch of faces, of human faces, that's horrible. That will be haunting my nightmares tonight. Thank you, thanks, thanks for that, PC Games. Cheers, cheers, mate, cheers. Uh, then we've got, I'm guessing this, this must be Father Dagon here. Yes, that must be Father Dagon. Yeah, I think it must be. So, um, yeah, if you, again, if you want to have some horrible dreams tonight, um, Father Dagon and Mother Hydra are kind of a, a thing, a couple. So uh, imagine the fish lady with the wig from the last one and this dude just just having a great old time together. Um, yeah, exciting stuff. So again, thank, thanks, Pits and Games. That's, uh, oh boy. So... I'm assuming you must be, by process of elimination, uh, Gatanathoa. Nice. Again, lovely model. Oh, God, look at that. Just look at that. So cool. Um, oh, with a horrible tongue on his back. Oh, that's gross. I love it. Um, they've done a really good job of making all these weird, creepy, formless cosmic entities genuinely look pretty different from each other. Um, some of them, there's little, like, you know, like Atlak Naka and Rantegoth are both kind of spider-like, but what are you going to do? That's what they are, right? That's how they're described in the books. Um, but like, yeah, this guy doesn't look like anyone. He doesn't look like anything and he doesn't look like anyone. And that, my friends, is good design. I mean, for this, not for like a car. You don't want to be driving something like this. Yeah, I'll, I'll shut up about that. Um... Back you go, and I believe that the last uh, great old one pack in Onslaught 1 just has a single great old one in it. I'm not sure why, perhaps it was a stretch goal thing, I'm not entirely sure, I wasn't on board for Onslaught 1, um, hence getting Onslaught 2 with Onslaught 1. about how we do Yes, that's better. That's easy. Right, give me the definition of easy. Okay, great. Old one, pack three. Uh, yes, just just one one great old one. Gobbergeg. Go, Gobbergeg. Ooh, got a 
a bit of uh, tear in there. This one's tight in. Um, there we go. I have no idea who Gobbergeg is. Uh, I don't think... Wow. I don't think he was in um, the aforementioned Call of Cthulhu roleplay bestiary I have. Um, but he's big. This guy's pretty big. Lots of weird rocky protrusions all over him. Kind of a weird rock fungus vibe. Um, which is the name of my new post-rock band. Yeah. Nice. Got no idea who you are, Gobbergeg. I'm looking forward to slamming you down on the board during a board game. Maybe not even Cthulhu Wars. Maybe just Monopoly or Cthulhu. And uh, saying, beware, beware Gobbergeg. Yes. In fact, that could really liven up a game of Monopoly or Cthulhu, and I thoroughly recommend it. Uh, what else have we got in Onslaught 1? Here's something. Here's something small. We've got a bunch of map packs, so we'll take a look at those. Um, but we also have, which has a bit of glue marking on it. Is that glue marking or...? No, it's fine. Um, yeah, just a, a new first player marker, which is straight up just a bust of HP Lovecraft himself. You funny, scary old racist. Um, yeah, no one should be said about that really. It's, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. No one's going to be going out and buying that on its own, but it's, yeah, it's fine to have. It's always nice to have a chunky first player token so that people don't forget who is the first player. So we've got here, ooh, wow, these are heavy. Uh, Prime Earth, Prime Evil Earth map expansion. This is the first of the map expansions, which is the last kind of things that we've got here in Onslaught 1. Again, you've got a, a Wii rulebook, um, because these things have rules uh, for the different maps, which is pretty neat. So obviously Primeval is a kind of ancient earth map. Uh, we'll, I'll try and unfold these as much as we can, but obviously these things are fucking... Yeah, I mean, if you've seen... <laughs> Well, we'll do this first. Shall we do this first? We'll do this first. And there's 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 kind of two. Is it a two-parter or are there two? Yeah, there are two maps because there's one for five player and one for... Okay, which is interesting. This is actually a much smaller map. Okay, well, that's interesting. And also super useful, right? Or am I saying that and these are two parts? It's a fucking two-part. I'm a fucking idiot. I am a fucking idiot. Five player, and then this will be, there we go, yeah, three player, and then the other side will be five player. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Ignore me, I'm an idiot. I was going to say, that would be really good to take it for, like, uh, put it on a smaller table and play. But no, you can't. Uh, so this is the five player side. There's a three player side as well, I won't flip it over to show you. Uh, and I believe that the four player side is one three player, one of the three player sides and one of the five player sides. I think that's how that works in this game, I want to say. Uh, but yeah, it's fun. I mean, I don't know what these things do yet. <laughs> uh, but it looks nice, and it's good to play on, it'll be nice to play on a different map. And yeah, it's a friendlier map, because you don't feel like you're killing everyone in the world. Because they don't exist yet, because it's primeval Earth. Exciting times. I like how... The boards in, in this game could have been made really dark. Um, not that this is, you know, bright and day glow, but it's like, it's colourful, and I really like that. I really like that, because it, it's a much more fun experience to play. Um, I'm going to briefly... Yes, the four-player configuration is a three and a five half each. That makes sense. Uh, we've got a bunch of extra things to put on the board here. Is there anything actually under this? Am I being weirdly? No, I am being weird. There's nothing under this. It just seemed like an odd thing, configuration to have for fun having nothing underneath. But um, they need to have it this shape because of this, yeah, yeah, etc. Uh, so these are icebergs. And they look quite pretty, actually. Ooh, they are pretty. Check that out. I like that. Slightly translucent. And presumably these do some kind of thing where they float around the oceans and do something. 
something as yet unrevealed to my tiny little brain. Um, yeah. Sweet. Oh god. Oh god. Please spit. Don't make me destroy all these glaciers. Fine. It's probably fine. There we go. So that's the first of our map packs in Onslaught 1. Let's move on to the second. Yugoth, or Pluto, as it is known in the real world. So again, you've got a bit of a guide. Looks like there's more going on in this one. Um, as in more different weird stuff. Cool. Slime mold, I don't know what that is yet, but I'll find out. Uh, brain cylinder tokens. Exciting. And we won't look at both sides of this. Again, we'll just look at, we can just look at one half, because we can get the vibe from one half, right? So there we go, that's uh, one half of the Yugoth three player map. Slime Sea Overlook, lots of Slime Sea, Polar Seas, Radiation Wastes, Oxygen Seas, Laboratories, Spore Badlands, Toxin Disposals. I like it. Ooh, and this one has a Methane Sea. It's just what I've always wanted in a board game. Uh, and then, on the back, on here, again I don't think, no, we've got nothing under there. Um, We've got some figures. So these are the aforementioned slime molds, which are nice and weird with horrible kind of, these holes have been sculpted and they really look like a bubble has just popped on them. That's gross, love it. And then this is the Watcher, which is actually a slightly different color to anything else. Um, I don't know what the Watcher is, I don't know what the Watcher does, but this is the Watcher and uh, he's just doing his thing. Doing his thing. Watching, presumably. These can go back and center and on top. There's a, obviously this game has a lot of packaging. <laughs> um, and it's done well, it's definitely done well. Um, but the trade-off for it being done well is it's not done in a particularly space-saving way. Um, so everything's secure, everything's safe, everything's well packaged, but, oh my word, you're going to need a lot of space. I am going to need a lot of space. So here's the final thing in Onslaught 1, before we move on to Onslaught 2, oh my god. Uh, oh, the first thing that's wrong is this has been bent slightly in the package. If that's the worst thing that happens, I am fine with that. Um, so Dreamlands, I discussed what the Dreamlands were already. This is the map where you can uh, play in the Dreamlands. So, Mount Nigranic, Enchanted Woods, Selaface, Sea of Dawn, Lang, Mnar, Zura, lots of these names I don't recognise because I haven't read the Dreamland cycle in a, in a good few years. Uh, but yeah, again, nice and vivid, exciting colours. Is that just going to have the same stuff on the back? Yes, it is. Pretty much. And we get a bunch of figures with this one as well. Which is interesting, because I thought all the Dreamlands stuff was in the Dreamlands Surface and Underworld boxes. Evidently not. So we've got some Zoogs. Who are weird kind of possum creatures. Sitting on a little plant there. And we've got one. Bowl. I thought these were called dolls. Hmm. Ugh. Oh god. Um, with a mouth big enough to literally fit my finger into. Um, it's a kind of like a... Tremors. You guys seen Tremors? Some of you have seen Tremors. Some of the older of you have seen Tremors. Um, yeah. Again, nice model. Nice texturing. Real nice texturing on the top. Look at that. 
And again, dynamic, kind of bursting out of the ground here. Like it. I bet you this guy is going to roam across the map, just fucking everyone's day up. Which sounds great to me. So to me, it looks like perhaps uh, the most complex of these map packs, just as a gut, would be Yugoth, followed by Dreamlands, and then Primeval is perhaps a pretty straightforward one, because the glaciers seem to be the only thing there that we're of concern. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take a short break now, <laughs> uh, and then let's take a look at Onslaught 2. Okay, here we are. Onslaught 2. Onslaught 2. Come on, man. You can do this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah! Um, Onslaught 2. Uh, first one I'm going to look at is Cosmic Terrors. Um, now, why is this called Cosmic Terrors and not something else? Um, because it introduces a new concept of the Terror Entity. Uh, acquired in the same manner as neutral monsters and share some of the same traits. However, they are amazingly powerful and dangerous. So, presumably not quite great old, Like, a halfway between neutral monsters and great old ones, I suppose. Um, I suppose that's the idea. Um, so, what have we got here? Uh, the Great Race of Yith. Um, who are these guys? Who basically... Uh, Oh wow, they've got like a kind of sci-fi gun going on there, nice. Um, so these guys basically hop between different species' brains, um, which is how their species survives. Um, so like they were originally a completely different looking species and now they're these ones and then like, yeah, they just jump between different species with their brains basically. Um, and bring other species back to their time so they can learn more about them and stuff like that. They're not actually particularly horrific. Um, it's a story called The Something Out, The Shadow Out of Time. Um, and it's weird because it's written like a horror story and it's all like, oh, this is the horrible thing. And then you read it and you're like, oh, that's actually just a pretty cool sci fi concept. But there we go. There's, that's these guys anyway. Great race of Yeth. They're weird sci-fi guns, which totally doesn't look out of place. <laughs> but it's neat, I like it. Um, we've got uh, Quakil Utaas, who's kind of like maybe a great old one, but also maybe not. Who's this kind of weird mummified dude who just turns people to dust whenever he touches them and may or may not be a kind of time god or something. Um, yeah. He looks horrific and neat. Um... And then we've got, oh my, oh, okay, so this is a doll. So bowl is a small doll? I don't know. Uh, that will make no sense to you unless you watch the, the last bit, but there we go. But oh my god, how fucking big is this? This is huge. <laughs> like, uh, the bowl looked like one of the, the, the um, creatures from Tremors. This looks like an actual sandworm from Dune. Like, this is huge. This is so good. A uh, little bit of seaming where the, the different components are put together, but yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, some weird chin flap things. Um, but yeah, what a miniature, guys. What a miniature. And again, really dynamic. Uh, yeah, really liking that. Well, just notice that this is, I guess this is meant to be kind of like almost speed lines of like the explosion coming out rather than anything else, I don't know. But uh, yeah, like that, like that a lot. Uh, don't want to fight it. Don't want to fight it. Not in the game or in real life. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm a pretty, pretty tough dude. Pretty, pretty tough dude. I mean, that's why I run a board game channel. Um, but uh, wouldn't want to fight one. No. Uh, and then obviously cards for stuff. What does the dole actually do? Um, if the dole is killed or eliminated in battle, earn two elder signs. Hmm. In addition, your opponent earns two demo two bow your choice. Um, yeah. I should read more about what these actual things do, but uh, obviously with this being primarily an unboxing kind of thing or a look through thing, I don't know. I never like to use the term unboxing, even though that is literally exactly what I'm doing. I'd like to think this has a bit more to it than that. Okay. Great old one, pack four. More great old ones. Because there aren't enough, there are never enough great old ones. Uh, so who have we got in this one? I think we're kind of getting to the point of the ones I don't know all that much about now. 
Um, so there's three in this, but one of them has two... Uh, yeah, so this is Nyogtha, the thing that should not be. And it has two figures, but it is one, one great old one. Um, so that's an interesting thing, an interesting notion. Kind of just a load of serpent thingies. Weirdly, I'm not intentionally talking about Tremors a lot, but weirdly looks like the tongue of the thing from Tremors that has kind of multiple serpent things. I'll stop talking about Tremors, but go watch Tremors. Um, this is uh, Tulsha, I think. The Awakener. Uh, yeah, weird energy fire creature thing. Uh, with nice... I don't know if it's coming out on camera, but like it's almost got kind of like indented eyes here that are just like slight shallow impressions. Pretty, pretty nice design. Be pretty careful with a little bit of um, fragility here, but uh, I mean that's not a bad thing, you know. It's just uh, something to be aware of. Nice. I like that. And then we've got Beatis, the serpent bearded. Um, which is because of all those serpents that he, he has as a beard, I guess. Crawling out of some weird, horrible well. Um, yeah, I have no idea who Beatis is. What he does, what he's about, what team he supports, favourite colour, dreams and aspirations. It's just a, just a, just a neat model. Yeah. That's the uh, Great Old One Pack 4. Three more Great Old Ones for your fun and pleasure, although with four, four models. It's an interesting idea, having one of the Great Old Ones have, have two models. I'm sure there's all sorts of interesting mechanical effects that can be done with that, even if it's... I mean, even if it is literally just, yeah, we've got some models and do the same thing. That, that in itself is an interesting mechanical effect, so... There we go. Now, let's take a look at Ramsey Campbell Horrors. Uh, Ramsey Campbell is probably the second most famous or prolific um, mythos author. Probably. Uh, I, I haven't read any of his stuff. <laughs> but um, I'm, again, familiar with it from the old uh, tabletop roleplay stuff. Um, so at least some of these creatures have uh, have tokens associated with them. Um, and I reckon I should be able to actually recognise these guys. Let's see. Uh, so the insects from Shagai. Which are uh, these uh, insects. Yeah. Some of whom are perched on nice, nice old skulls. And then we've got... Uh, Hi Hort. You go back in your thing. No. Yes. Uh, this is I Hort, I believe. Uh, very different design from, again, the only thing I'm familiar with is the design in that tabletop roleplay book, which had illustrations all through the best route. Very different design from that. Um, but yeah, suitably gross. Um, I'm not sure if it's my imagination. It's slightly less detail on these Onslaught 2 um, moulding so far. Um, but it may actually be, to be honest, it's probably, there isn't, but it's likely that, um, because these are the early printings, whereas I would imagine the Onslaught 1 stuff, I've got a later printings. Um, in early printings, uh, printings is maybe the wrong word, early mouldings, um, often you lose a little bit of the detail as the, the mould needs to, I don't know what the term is, settle or, or something like that. So that's possibly a reason. Or it may, be, it may simply be my imagination as well. Um, just a lot of smoothness around her, but that might be intentional. Yeah, I don't know what, again, I don't know what iHort's really about. There we go. Uh, Glarky. Uh, I have heard of Glarky, and I know that uh, the story, I believe, that's about Glarky you know, that Ramsay Campbell wrote is set in, um, I think, the Severn Valley in Wales, which is interesting. Um, or interesting to me as a British person, and perhaps to you as a British or a Welsh person. Um, yeah, this is a nice model. I like that. Lots of spines, which genuinely feel like I could do myself an injury on them. And these weird kind of geometric pyramids that he uses to move around on. 
yeah, like that model. I, like, I do like that model. Quite like to use Glarky in the game for sure. And you know the deal by now boards, spellbooks, etc. etc. If there's, a, if there's a, a demand for it, I, um, I could see my way clear to doing a bit of a video where I, I perhaps go into these in detail and talk about the actual rules. But um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure there's, there's too much, too many people interested in that. But let me know if that is something that would interest you. And I could go through the, um, the rules for like all the great old ones or something and have a bit of a talk about what I think of those. Um, obviously that'll probably be rather off the cuff because uh, I haven't played with all these yet. Um, our second load of Ramsey Campbell Horrors. Uh, and I think, yes, I do, I will be able to recognise all these guys. Uh, so Satyrs. Just kind of weird, creepy Satyrs with, uh, with one arm. Yeah, wearing jeans? Jean shorts? Oh no, they're kind of torn off. <laughs> but why not jean shorts? Horrible, horrible jean shorts. Um, yeah, weird, creepy Sato things. Uh, and then two of my favourite things in that, uh, that Call of Cthulhu bestiary, even though I never read the stories, um, were these guys. Uh, so first off, uh, we've got Dale Off, um, who's like this conglomeration of constantly shifting mechanical rods and spheres and stuff, which I thought was a really neat idea for a horrific god. And I think how it's described in the in that bestiary is like out of the corner, like all these shifting things and out of the corner of your eye when you look at him, you always seem to see eyes staring at you from kind of gaps in this writhing machinery. But anytime you look at it directly on, there's nothing there. Um, which I thought was a, a lovely, lovely idea. I, th I believe that was Dale Off in that that bestiary, and presumably that's how Ramsey Campbell Wright has written the the creature. Um, yeah, nice, very nice, different model. This um, with obviously that mechanical feel to it. I do like that. And then this is a Golanak, Ye Golanak. Not sure of the pronunciation, um, but again. One of my favourite creatures in that uh, in that bestiary, uh, just headless, mouths in the palm of hands. That's just that's it really. That's all it takes to get me get me excited. Apparently, um, yeah, it's a nice design, nice model, horrible, horrible stuff. <laughs> like that. I like I like this pack. I definitely like this pack. Anyone out there who is a Ramsey Campbell fan, tell me where to start. Tell me which story to start with. And I will, I promise, I will read it. I'm probably never mention it on the channel, but I will read it if you, if you make a recommendation to me. Um, so, the only faction pack in Onslaught 2 is the Cho Cho, which is fair enough. Um, they're talking about doing an Onslaught 3, but it's, I'm kind of like, aren't you running out? <laughs> <laughs> of like me that stuff to do. I don't know, maybe not. Um but certainly um that's what I'd think, but uh maybe not. Um so the Cho Chu, I'll get Cho Cho again. It, interestingly this comes with two. It comes with the, the standard um kind of punch board thing, uh or card thing, card stock uh one and also a, a cardboard one. Uh we'll get to more of these later when we get to the stretch goals. Because uh, I basically included in my stretch goals these for all the other factions. So, yeah, it's good to see it here. Um, so the unique ability of the Chocho is Sycophancy. When an enemy player does a Ritual of Annihilation, either you gain one Doom or he earns one fewer Doom his choice. That's pretty nice. That's that's a nice control on people running away with it as well. Um, no, I do like that. I like that as a power. And it's a passive as well, it doesn't cost anything, which is always nice. Ooh, weird pink things. Okay, um, let's have a look in here. Oh, this will have High Priests in. Um, does that have the High Priest in? That has a High Priest in. The High Priest is a slightly different design, though, to the um, standard High Priest, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because he's got, like, horns and stuff. But otherwise, that's the, uh, that's the High Priest. And then, oh, not, not too many different monsters for the Chochos. Um, oh, they have got a different, look, they've got a different acolyte. 
I think they're quite sculpt. Because they're meant to be kind of not not fully human, the Chochos. They're like this weird proto-human race. Um, that, like a lot of things in Lovecraft you don't want to look at too closely because it, it just might be horribly racist. Um, but yeah. But looks like they've got... Okay, so they've got the proto shoggoths Ooh, I do like this model. That's horrible. Kind of this formless mass of plasma and roiling organic material just bursting up from the ground. Ooh, bursting up from some some poor poor dude, actually, who was modelled around the base there. Kind of nasty little mouth. A bit cartoony, which is <laughs> fine in the context of, like, the weirdness going on all around it. Um, yeah, so that's their only monster. Bad luck of it. So their main th they must be big on their acolytes and cultists. Perhaps they get particular powers for them. Um, and then Ubo Sathla is their great old one. Who's this kind of writhing mass of, again, shapeless weirdness. Um, who rides around in this cavern full of car weird carbon stone, if I remember rightly, which is me what this stuff is. Uh, there's all these globules bursting off from him. Yeah, weird. Possibly my, my least favourite um, faction Great Old One model, maybe. Just, just it doesn't excite me all that much, but um, I'm sure it'll be fun to play. And your mileage may vary, as with all things in board games. Oh god, this really doesn't look like it's going to fit on top now. Um, I have no idea how. Oh, did you go in like that? Maybe you went in like that. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yes, yes, yes. Things, things, and stuff. No? No? Thing, but I imagine it's much the same as the others. Yeah, looks good. Um, all the faction bits in Cthulhu Wars in the main game as well come with uh, like a section of the rules that's how to play them, um, kind of in like a tactical way, like what's your best, what, what should, how should you try and play them, uh, but also a section that's how to beat them. <laughs> Which is really good uh, and useful if you tend to have games where one faction runs away with things, which um, I think a lot of people do when they first start the game. Uh, for us, it's the yellow sign. The yellow sign is one. I think two out of the three games we played, or something like that. So, yeah. Uh, the library at Salino map pack. I don't know what the library at Salino is. It may be a non Lovecraft thing, or it may be one I'm just not overly familiar with. Um, yeah. But I believe this will be another quite different map pack. Uh, lots of symbol things there, and I don't know what all these things do, but um, they look like they look nice and exciting. Um, now this does look like quite a different map with all these kind of because it's just rooms, right? Which is interesting. Uh, the crawling ones, hyperquarium, oubliette, black hole, blue hole, chamber of Sungak, chamber of Apgalu. The Barrier of Naktith, Lake of Harley, Gloomloft, um, Ear and the Nguyenger. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, 
fountain, floating tower. Yeah, this looks uh, this looks interesting. Guardian under the lake. That looks interesting as a map. Very different in style. But again, color colorful and big blocky kind of lines. The design I like. Uh, some hint cards. Mm. Uh, on how to play that, presumably. A special library at Selino die. Regular viewers will know how much I love my custom dice. More of that to come with the stretch goals. Uh, and then these, these things, whatever they are. Um, is one of them like a l weird librarian thing? Let's find out. Let's find out in here. Uh, custodian, and you need the librarian. So this is the custodian. Um, getting very kind of arth weird big arthropod thing. That's uh, that's someone you want protecting the books at your library. Not going to get many repeat finds there. And this is a librarian. Handy tentacle for reaching the top shelves. Big 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 pile of books uh, behind them. Yeah, why not, right? I mean, a lot of libraries are getting cuts um, and having a bit of a you know budget crisis. So one solution is to. Uh, Summon some kind of hideous creature from beyond the veils of time, and uh, set them to work. Tory brain. Okay, okay, okay. Shut up. Moving on. Uh, that much is going there. And you know what? I know I said I wasn't going to punch board anything, but this makes it a lot easier. And you get to hear that satisfying, lovely sound. Ooh. Because I need to. Uh, I have a suspicion that I was going to struggle to uh, get that back in. But now, it's all beautiful. There we go. The library at Salino. Map. Pack. And I think, I think that wraps us up for Onslaught 2. Um, so Onslaught 2, I, the thing is, I'm not entirely sure how Onslaught 1 was released, whether it all came as one, but it's certainly a bigger... Um, expansion set. But I don't know if that came over time or if it was something that um, um, was all released at once via stretch goals. And so, in fact, I imagine that Onslaught One, for my purposes, is also maybe some stretch goals from the first Kickstarter. But I wasn't on board with that, so I don't know. Um, but what I do know about stretch goals for is Onslaught Two. And now we're going to take a look, the final uh, bit of this video, um, at the stretch goals for Onslaught Two. Let's take a look. Okay, we're nearly there folks, we're nearly there, if my voice doesn't give out first. Um, so now we're looking at the, the stretch goals for Onslaught 2, um, of which I've got, I think, everything. Uh, I think I plumped for everything. Uh, first off, we've got just some faction coloured gates. Um, I'm not sure what specific use these have, um, beyond just being fa faction matching, but you always need more than one gate. I'm not sure if there's like a special rule for special gates or something like that. I just don't know, but they're nice. Faction coloured gates, there we go. Um, not going to say any more about those. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff in the stretch goals, which is just better card stocked stuff, um, as well as some plastic stuff. And these are things like that, basically. There's a load of these. I won't get these all out and look through them. It's just higher quality cardboardy um, stock for a bunch of components. Um, and again, these these I've got here are much the same thing. Um, either better quality card um, or like this bigger Doom Track. Um, yeah, better quality card or cardboard. Um, and for some reason I got both. I'm not sure where I got both, but I got both. Um, I will have selected to get both, it won't be an accident, but um, yeah. Just higher quality cardstock stuff, uh, such as these lovely, um, like this would be from the base game, but uh, it's the cardboard version of the, the faction stuff. Uh, yeah, not much to say about these, other than they're very nice, they're chunky, they'll feel really good on the board when you're, when you're putting stuff on them. Um, yeah, it's good. It's good stuff. Um, but it's nothing to... Uh, Nothing that, that really needs much of an introduction. Uh, you'll know if you, the kind of uh, board gamer you are, whether this is the kind of stuff you're into. Uh, all of since the uh, you know the stretch goals are gone. I'm not sure if these will be available at all anymore anyway. But um, yeah, in case you guys want to look at them, that's that's that stuff. If I feel like I'm railroading slightly through that, it's because I don't have very much to say about it. Um, 
Okay, let's deal with the heaviest thing in this entire delivery that came through to me. Oh god, like literally that was almost a disaster. Um, stuff breaking out the box there. Uh, yeah, okay, so what have we got here? These are the six to eight player versions of every map. Yes, that's what I said. Six to eight player versions of every map. I'm not going to unfold these all and look through them, just that is what this is, and you can see the size of this, and it's hefty, let me tell you that. Um, it's all the same card quality. Um, yeah, I don't see any particular point in, in wheeling all these out and showing you, but I'll try and tilt it on the side so I can at least show you one more um, on the other end, because that was obviously the library. Um, let's see if I can actually get one of these out. On the other side, or oh, there's also some other card stuff thing in here. Um, oh, more more cardboard gates, I guess, because you need more cardboard gates for more. Okay, so this looks like the base map. Um, yep. And again, it's kind of too big to show you <laughs> lots of the stuff, but uh, uh, yeah, these are big. These are big. And that would be the six player side. And then this, whoa, is the uh, the eight player side. So if you've ever wanted to fuck shit up Cthulhu style in Bohemia, this is the map for you and seven of your closest horrific cosmic chums. Oh god. Is that folded wrong? I've got a horrible suspicion that's folded wrong. Can't be folded wrong, can it? Oh god. Maybe? No. No, no. No, it wasn't fault. Okay. I'll actually keep that separate. Yeah. This is a, a very hefty little package. I mean, the whole thing is obviously pretty big and intimidating anyway. But that specifically is the biggest, heftiest thing here. And one I am least looking forward to carrying upstairs. So, what else we got? Uh, most of the stretch goal stuff, as you'd imagine from stretch goal stuff, is uh, nice to haves but not essentials. And a lot of it is almost collectible style, to be honest. Um, I'm trying to root everything out down here. Before I move on to some of the, the big kind of headline stretch goal stuff. So, Custom dice! Custom dice! Um, I mean, everyone knows I love custom dice. These are probably my favourite things in the stretch goals. Because um, I love them so much and I love the design. Lovely black and green. Uh, you've got some other custom dice here. For um, different like different creatures and whatever. I have like near, weird needs for other dice and, and these are them. Uh, again, custom. Uh, weird looking stuff. You've got some collectible little figures here. I'm, I'm not sure why some of these were selected over others. It seems kind of weird to me. But you've got little weird collectible red insects from Shigai, which, I mean, yeah, fine, I guess. Uh, a red, red satyr. Like, I, I, I'm not sure why these were. High Priest. And some... Oh, this is like... These here are so you can build your own homebrew faction with a, a PDF that's available for download. Um, probably not something I'll end up doing, but yeah, those are things, I guess. Um, I'm not sure why these are just little red collectible things, really. Which, yeah, seems a bit random, but there we go, F fine, I guess. Um, this is definitely bag I'm most likely to give away somehow, but... Uh... And then we've got the um, Shining Trapezohedron Plastic Marker Set. So lots of other stuff in the game has cardboard markers, and this is basically plastic replacements for them all, like these desecration tokens for the yellow sign faction. Um, yeah, and basically I think every uh, plus, uh, cardboard token in the game that's not kind of like just the, the regular stuff. Um, or maybe this, I mean, there isn't really any regular stuff. Um, but I think this replaces everything, including like there's brain cylinders in there. I think these might be like webs from Atlak Um 
Yeah, and these are these are the um, the actual. Are these the actual like Doom Elder Elder Sign things? Maybe not. Um, we've got some brain cylinder things here. Yeah, but neat. I like um, I like chunky components. So this uh, these these will tick my boxes, and I will definitely play with these as opposed to the the cardboard stuff. I would imagine. Oh god, sealing that may be a nightmare that I'm not ready to enter into. Um, so yeah, that's that stuff. And now there's two other sort of big ticket items as far as the stretch goals go. And the weird thing is I'm more excited about one of them, but I know that everyone else is probably more excited about the other one, if, you've, if you know what the stretch goals are. So we'll do the one I'm excited by first, which is the Omega, uh, Omega Edition rulebook. And I believe this nice hardback book has... Every rule from Onslaught 1 and 2 in, um, I think. Yeah, neutral monsters, cosmic terrors. Yeah, yeah, it does, it does. It's got all that stuff. Um, yeah, which is pretty neat. Pretty neat altogether. Uh, the different high priests. Oh, the different high priests actually are different as well. There are actually seven different high priests, or, yeah, unique high priests. Huh. Okay, I did not know about this. Um, boobs, apparently. Not a very Lovecrafty picture. Um, yeah, ah, and there's the there's a component guide for the, the plastic set. Um, so what? Well, no, those are Elder Sign trophies. Okay, that's cool. Ritual Annihilation marker, additional maps. So yeah, it's a one-stop shop for all the rules. Uh, which is excellent, which is fantastic. And something I really look forward to in this, actually. Because I'm a nerd. I like that. Um, but the thing that most other people have been looking forward to are the special glow-in-the-dark great old one models which are in this extremely dangerous plastic container although there's some others in these and you know what, we'll, we'll go through the ones in the boxes first I think Whoop. so we've got, I mean they're the same models uh, but they glow in the dark. I haven't tried that yet, and uh, I suspect if I tried to get uh, some kind of film of that, that would not be something that worked out particularly well. Uh, apparently some of them are better at glowing than others. Ithaqua is apparently the most glowy. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing how they, uh, how they, how they perform. Um, God knows where I'd show them off. But uh, I don't know why I'm storing all this, so that's fine. We've got uh, now a Thotep there, King in Yellow and a Thakwa. And we've got... This is the only thing I noted might be slightly out of whack in my packaging, uh, which is my Glow Cthulhu. The wings look a bit, a little bit weird and fucked and, and paired up like that. Uh, but nothing I couldn't separate a bit out more with some hot water. Um, or they may separate over time anyway, they may just be being kind of held together a bit. Um, I think they should be slightly further out from each other, I don't know. I suppose it doesn't matter. Um, so we've got Glow Cthulhu there. And then in here, they are the faction Great Old Ones, I should say, not the, uh, not all <laughs> the neutral Great Old Ones. That would be a lot. Um, we've got Shub Nigrath. Ubo Sathler. Which just looks the same as a normal one, to be honest. I'm sure it is glowy. Uh, Rantigoth, Azathoth, good old Haster, my favourite of the all the Cthulhu Wars miniatures. Maybe not anymore, I don't know, I'll have to get used to the other ones. Sothogua, and Yog sothoth And that... Mm, that was everything. That was everything. Thank you for watching. If you've made it this far. We have, um, there'll be some links in the video description below, as well as the um, timestamps for the different kind of onslaughts and the, the stretch goals. Uh, there's a link to us doing a playthrough of Cthulhu Wars. Um, and please do let us know. Um, we'll probably do another playthrough with a lot of the onslaught stuff, try and do that. If you've got any preference for the kind of neutral great old ones you want to see us use, the factions you want to see us use, the map you want to see us use and stuff like that, um, please do leave links, uh, links, suggestions, in the comments below. We uh, read and appreciate the vast majority of them. Um, 
Otherwise, we have a Patreon. If you feel like chucking us some money, please do that. Check out the rest of the channel, like, comment, subscribe, etc. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Cthulhu for Targon, etc. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.